everybody, welcome to an Epic Mighty and Toys video today, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to be discussing the WWE draft, and I think I'm going to be doing a special video revolving a WWE figure draft. If you guys are interested in that, let me know down in the comment section below. Spam the comment section and hit the like button, man, so I know that you want to see a draft video. So please do that for me, I greatly appreciate it. But anyways, guys, getting into the draft, we had the WWE draft last night on Friday Night SmackDown. I did not watch the show live because I was watching my LA Lakers. If you guys know, I'm a huge Lakers fan, long time Laker fan since I was a kid. Kobe's my all-time favorite player. Always been a huge Laker supporter. And so I was waiting for them to win the championship last night. Watching along, watching the game. Couldn't get the job done. You know, the series is 3-2. One more game away, but I did not watch SmackDown. I had to go back and watch it so that I could get the review up for you guys. But a lot of interesting things took place on this. One thing I will say about the WWE draft is it doesn't feel as special as it used to in years past. I know you could say, well, it's just nostalgia, man. And yeah, it probably is nostalgia a little bit, but it just seems like the illogical things that happen in WWE just continue to happen, and that just, it sucks the fun out of everything, man. There's so many different, like, plot holes and just illogical things that takes place in WWE nowadays. Just really hurts the show, and I know it's always been that way to a certain extent, but it's just worse than ever when it comes to illogical stuff, so what I mean by illogical stuff is, like, you know, it's a draft. If you guys follow sports at all, the best talent goes immediately. There shouldn't be a cap on who you should take, so if you're drafting for Raw and SmackDown, unless it's just supposed to be completely random, which makes it way better, but make that known, because if it's going to be a draft, you would you would straight up just pick the top talent all the way. You know what I'm saying? It wouldn't be, like, there'd be way more talent included in these pools of players, or talent, superstars if you will, but if it was completely random, the champion wouldn't be first, right? The champions would not go first if it was completely random, so there's your illogical stuff. If it's completely random, both champions aren't going to just go automatically first, and if it's not completely random, why did you you, uh, select some of this other talent over the other talent. Doesn't make any sense. In inconsistencies there, Brad. It doesn't, it doesn't line up right here, if you get what I mean. So they can make the draft a whole lot better. I mean, there's some great creative stuff that they can do, and the fact that they have a full team working on the creative, and they can't come up with something really fun and energizing and fresh for the draft after all these years, it's just, it's just it just blows my damn mind. You could give it a real sports feel. You could make it feel important. There's enough talent across WWE to have it where all the top top talent can go on one night, and then the rest of the top talent can go on the next night. It doesn't have to be sporadic like this. Do you guys get what I'm saying? Let me know what you guys think of that down in the comment section below. I'm just letting you know my observations. I'm going to be real with you about what I think about the draft here, but let's get into the results of this draft and talk about what I think is going to take place. So if you guys haven't noticed yet, this is your Raw draft, and this is your SmackDown draft. And so far, what I'm seeing is that there wasn't a ton of things that switched over. We do have some interesting developments that we're going to get into as well, but Drew McIntyre and Roman Reigns do stay on their respective brands makes the most sense. You know, they are the top champions, and since the Universal Championship is blue, I'd like to see it on SmackDown, but I mean, geez, man, how sick would this be to be the world, you know, the world heavyweight title? Back in the day, the titles didn't match up with the brand, so they could switch places, and it would make a lot more sense. When the Universal Championship was on Raw, and then it switched to SmackDown, you knew we were going to get a blue title. If, if Roman went back over to Raw, you know we'd get a freaking red title, so I don't know, but now we do have some interesting developments because the New Day, the New Day have been drafted over to Raw, so if you guys didn't know exactly Xavier Woods has returned. They won the SmackDown Tag Team Championships for the 1800th time. Last night, they did win their SmackDown Tag Team Championships for the 100th millionth time. And the biggest development out of this is that Big E is over on SmackDown. So Big E is all alone on SmackDown and Xavier Woods and Kofi Kingston are on Raw as the SmackDown Tag Team Championships. Say what you will about that. It's very odd that they would get drafted over there as SmackDown Tag Champions. You would think that all champions would just stay on their respective brands since the titles have such a unique look and they stay right there, you would think that that would just be automatic. Like, like, why are they getting drafted? You know what I'm saying? Like, just keep them where they are and then draft the rest of the talent. But that's a whole nother issue. Since they have split up, I kind of like this. This is a very interesting story. I am buying into this. I like to see this. What will come of this? Will Big E maybe start to turn to the dark side? Maybe we'll see a little darker side of Big E. Maybe Kofi and Xavier. I, I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of developments that, come, could, that could come out of this. It's going to be very interesting to see. So that is something that I'm very excited in. We'll just have to see how the New Day maybe stack up to the Hurt Business. That could be an interesting feud that I would like to see, but what are you going to do about the SmackDown? Now that Kofi and Xavier are over on Raw, I mean, it's it's freaking, is it not perfect? It's going to happen, right? The Street Profits will go over to SmackDown. Just makes the most sense. What if the Street Profits end up getting with Big E? Maybe they replace these two guys. What if that happens? Maybe they get a little jealous. I don't know. I'm just kind of just fantasy booking off the top of my head for .4 seconds. Just something that popped in my head randomly. So I think the Street Profits will probably migrate from Raw over to 
SmackDown sits. The SmackDown Tag Champions went over there. And this is a perfect opportunity to give us new championship belts. This is just the perfect time. Just scrap the red straps, scrap the blue straps, scrap the name, and change it to the World Tag Champions and the WWE Tag Champions. That's what they need to do and bring back new title designs. That's what we need to see. Please, God, and Jesus, heaven. We've seen those penny type designs, those Spartan designs for way too damn long. It's been way long enough. Get that out of my mouth. So we have some interesting develops going on right there. Another thing that I think is kind of funny is how they make Jay Uso. Jay Uso has never been a single superstar in his entire life and since he got brought up in this big time matchup and this big feud with Roman Reigns, they have, you know, elevated him so they make him get drafted high up in the draft, which I guess makes sense. You know, he has been elevated, but I don't think anybody would have batted an eye if you drafted both Usos. I don't think you had to draft just Jay. And I guess unless they're trying to split those guys up like the New Day, they have been a team for a very long time. So if they split them up, that would be interesting. But since they're all involved in Roman Reigns right now, they'd go to the same brand probably anyways. So I think that them staying together and them drafting Jay Uso here wasn't like the biggest deal. I just think it's funny how WWE is like, oh, remember this guy? He's important. So we're going to draft him now when really he hasn't been a top level single guy in his whole career. So I thought that was also interesting. Another thing we have, guys, is we do have AJ Styles over on Raw, the Hurt Business. We got Miz and Morrison going over there. Ricochet continues to stay over on Raw. We have Naomi over there with Asuka. Shayna Baszler and uh, Nia Jax are also over there. So, uh, you know, Raw, Raw had some decent little things. For the most part, the landscape is virtually the same. And I'm a stupid jackass because Mandy Rose is not on SmackDown. I meant to put her over here on Raw with Dana Brooke. Apparently, Dana Brooke and her are, are a thing now. But I think one of the, probably the biggest things that happened on this night is that Seth Rollins has moved over to SmackDown. And when he moved over to SmackDown, I was super happy for it, bro. I was like, hell yeah, man. Seth Rollins going over the blue brand. Love to see it. Friday night, Messiah. Now I'm going to have to change the tights. Uh, I'm excited for this. I like Seth Rollins on SmackDown. I think this is fresh. This is new. Seeing him get back in the face of Roman Reigns, it looks like we got shades of MDT live over here, especially if the Usos align with Roman Reigns, creating the bloodline, heel faction versus Seth Rollins. We could be witnessing MDT live before our eyes on WWE television. Another thing is, the, another reason why I was excited is that it's like, oh shit, Seth Rollins is finally separated from Rey Mysterio. I don't have to see Rey Mysterio and Seth Rollins feud anymore. They've been feuding like for a whole year almost, it seems like, and I know that everybody talks about long-term storylines and long-term booking, but my God, long-term booking is when somebody goes away and they feud with somebody else and then something else comes back. Not just straight feuding with somebody for months upon months, 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 months in a row, especially when your first matchup was gouging each other's eyes out, and I don't know how you get any worse than that, and then they progressively have worked their way backwards into just singles fighting and regular wrestling competition. Now the families are involved when we've already been personal with families involved. We already had your son. Why do we need your wife and your daughter? I don't know, Brad. So Seth Rollins and Rey Mysterio both get drafted to SmackDown with Dominic. So my God, we have to witness this some more. Seth Rollins even witnessed it or said it earlier in the night. He's like, I don't have to see Rey's stupid face anymore. Here he is, Brad. He's right here in your face again. So that's just another reason why it's kind of just, oh man. I just think this draft overall was kind of like luster, nothing too crazy. I wasn't expecting anything, which is why I wasn't watching it live. I mean, it, it didn't matter if damn CM Punk returned. I probably wouldn't have watched it live because I was watching the Lakers try to win a championship, but I still think that, I still think that overall, you know, not the greatest draft of, you know, night of drafting. Otis also made his way over to SmackDown if he wasn't there already. He is Mr. Money in the Bank. I think they're trying to figure out a way to get the case off him. I guess we'll have to see about that. And another big time storyline is that Lars Sullivan has returned. We do not know where he will be drafted. That will have to, you know, that remains to be seen, but he did return. He assaulted Jeff Hardy and Matt Riddle, if I'm not mistaken. I think it was both of them. You know, we haven't seen him in years upon years. I never got rid of my Lars Sullivan because I was like, it's it's a, it's a freaking, you know, he, he's going to return. Like, I knew he would return. Here he is. And I'm not a Lars Sullivan fan whatsoever. I think that he's on the level of Trash Corbin. I'm just not a fan of the guy. He does not move the needle for me. He just kind of puts me to sleep. And uh, yeah, I just, I'm not a big fan of him. I don't know what it is. It's like just, I don't know. But anyways, guys, I think that pretty much does it for my draft review of night one. We'll probably do night two as well. Again, let me know down in the comment section below if you guys want to see that draft video. Hit the like button. Comment, comment, comment. Let me know down below if you want to see that draft video. But I think that is going to do it for my draft results and review for today, guys. Hope you guys did enjoy. Let me know what you thought of the draft down in the comment section below. Any fantasy booking ideas you might have. I think the landscape is looking okay. I think once we get draft night two in here, it will have a lot better aspect of what's going on with these brands and where everybody falls. But that is going to do it for the video, guys. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MyDamnToys, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.